All right, so I have the die station all set up. I've got four different sets of die picked out. I've got two pots on the stove heating and two that are ready to go. Today we are dyeing Gulf Coast Native locks. And this pot's already getting pretty hot, so it's time to get started. Before I do anything, I want to make sure my skin and my lungs are protected. I don't have the proper uh, face mask, so I'm using a painter's mask. And that's better than nothing at this point. And I'm wearing food grade gloves, which I think when I buy more, I will buy medical gloves instead, even though they make my hands smell disgusting. Okay, we're going to start with purples. And we're doing sprinkle dye today, which is not something I'm used to doing. So I think I'm going to start with Jacquard Acid Dye in purple. And this is a quarter teaspoon. And I did not use all of it. And then I think I will put some fuchsia, hot fuchsia. This time I'm only going to get a little bit. Now there's a pretty good bit of water in here and I weighed out about 135 grams of wool. That right there looks really, really pretty. I'm gonna let it sit for just a minute and then I'm gonna poke it down, um, poke the colors down into the water a bit. I want the color to distribute. I have, I started with a couple of tablespoons of salt and a teaspoon or two of citric acid and soaked the wool in the water for about an hour, which is uh, not critical. And then I began heating before putting the dyes in. So while I'm waiting on the colors to get exhausted. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of this really light lilac -y, and I don't know what brand this is. It came in a kit. And I didn't dry off my spoon very well. Right now these colors are really, really pretty. And I've heard that salt helps the dyes to absorb more evenly. I have no idea if that is even true. So this is my first time experimenting with salt and with the sprinkle method. So I'm going to let these colors absorb for a while and then we will be back. All right, this pan is all greens. I'm going to put my mask back on. Same method as before. This is spruce. It's my favorite green that I've used so far. I don't have all the Chicard dyes, all the colors, um, but I, I love how blue the spruce is. And now I'm gonna put some Kelly green in here. And that's a really bright green. It's one of the fluorescent colors, I believe. I know chartreuse is. I like the brightness of the Kelly green. And then, I don't know what color this is. It's a sample and I've completely forgotten the color. Um, it came in a, 
a kit I purchased a long time ago. So we're going to put some of this in the middle and see what color it turns out to be. Ooh, that's a really pretty blue. Now hopefully these colors will mix a little bit. Alright, so now that I've had this heating up for a while and it's good and steamy, I'm going to start doing my next uh, analogous color way, which I think I'm for this pan I'm going to go with gray. So I have, I'm not sure if I'm going to use it, I have gunmetal, silver gray, a sample, I don't even know what color this is. So. I'm going to actually start with one of the lighter colors. And I'm going to do more of an all over sprinkling. Now that I know the colors are not going to strike where I put them, um, they're just going to kind of go everywhere. And then I don't mind poking it down into the water a bit more. And of course, I forgot to put gloves back on. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I am going to use some of the gunmetal, but I'm going to go very light with it. Again, kind of an all over, it's got, a, it's got a bit of a bluish tint to it. If you do it right, it looks just like blue jeans. Oops, my, I've moved the camera closer to the stove, the tripod, and now it, uh, I keep bumping it with my elbow. I think that's all the color I'm going to put in. I don't think I want to put black in here. Well, there's some that's not had any dye on it. So I will sprinkle some more of this lighter color. Moving it around a little bit and then I will let the colors absorb as they will and if I need to add more color later I will do so. I think that's going to be very pretty. Okay so we're on our last pot for today's experiment. I only have four dye pots and I'm running all of them today. So we're working with oranges and I'm going to start with pumpkin orange, very light sprinkling all over and then I want to put some of the yellow in here to kind of brighten up the orange a bit but not a ton of yellow. And I am sprinkling it right on top, which is actually a lot easier than putting it in sections. And now I'm going to mix this into the water a little bit, kind of hoping this speckles. Sometimes the dyes um, are prone to speckling, and that makes them really really pretty. Now on this side that doesn't have a lot of dye on it, we're going to put some rust color. 
and I want to go super, super light on the rest. So I'm actually going to pinch with my fingers. And that is one full pinch. I've got some really nice oranges in here. So this is going to be more of a fall leaves orange, not a brilliant in your face orange, which is kind of what I wanted, but I should not have put the rest in there. So hopefully this is a much lighter version of the last brown I did, which has a lot of rust in it. All right. We shall let these cook for a while and then all four of them and then let them cool completely. It's been about 10 minutes and the dye has not fully exhausted. There is still some color in here, but it's, it's good enough for me. So now I'm going to attempt to flip this over and see if there are any undyed sections. Actually, I don't think there are. All right, here's our first pot again, and there is a lot of dye in here. So what I'm gonna do is give it a little flip and let all the colors absorb. Um, I've already turned the heat off, it was boiling slightly, so I turned the heat off, I'm just gonna let it cool a bit, and uh, probably have to soak up the excess dye with some more wool or something. So here's the final colors. They are still drying, but I have this beautiful fuchsia purple tonal. These did not turn out um, analogous. These turned out more semi-solid, I think. I'm not really sure what you would call these, but um, this one may be analogous. There was a lot of excess dye in the dye bath, but it all came out pretty easy. For this one the gray was fully exhausted and I am loving this I love all the different tones of gray in here the green I'm a little disappointed in because all the colors blended together a little too much but it'll be fine it's a pretty green and then we have this golden Beautiful, deep, rusty orange, and there's all sorts of different tones and colors. I think next time I need to just not use the rest. So this is pretty nice. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with these colors, and uh, I think they go well with the colors I already have, which I will put pictures here and show you. Tell me what you think about all this and what you think I should do different or a new experiment in the comment section down below. And I will talk to you again next time. Bye!